Hello everyone, just Gorn here, and welcome to the next episode of the Blyder Bazoo Tour. We are leaving the Chinese garden and entering the Asian swamp, and I am joined by the lay designer. Hello, thank you so much for having me. <laughs> no, thank you so much for being here. I'm so excited. This is yeah. Blyder, my favorite zoo. <laughs> <laughs> I haven't been there for so long, like... Uh, if you have read it on, on Twitter, I was already complaining, like, oh, I wasn't able to go there for so long, and <laughs> I'm just so excited to just be able to visit it somehow now. Somehow, with yes. You. Yes. And we are starting right off with an animal that we actually have in Planet Zoo over here. This is the exhibit of the Red Crowned Crane. Yes, definitely one. I, I, I like this one because it's like super lush with all the, the reeds and stuff and the yeah, signs. No, this area is absolutely beautiful and I'm always surprised how close you can actually get to the crane. Like it can get right up to the fence. Mm -hmm. uh, True. Yeah. I remember going there with my, my camera one day and then I was like, <laughs> oh, there's a red crown crane. And I was like walking all the way around it on like all these bridges and stuff. Mm -hmm. And then the red crown crane just walked towards the whole other side again. <laughs> so I was never near it because it was walking away oh, from me all the time. No, I definitely have had more luck in the past. <laughs> Uh, less lucky though is that uh, yeah if, <laughs> we're gonna keep mentioning it the bird flu is yeah. still in our way we cannot enter any of these aviaries it's um, so frustrating but yeah it, it is even being taken down a little bit you can see on the inside so they're making changes to yeah just make it a permanent non-walk aviary I think um, but for a second there we saw the black crowned uh, night heron and oh, the white naped crane. Old. Yes, that's oh the quack. That's the quack. <laughs> yeah, you start. Can you see the quack? And I was like, what? <laughs> Wait, so, what are those monkeys? I, I, oh yeah, I'm yeah. sorry. It's my favorite zoo, but I <laughs> don't know all the animals. I, I don't know so the animals. At, at the center of the the swamp here is this island for the um, the Sulawesi crested macaque, oh, and this is something that I think is so so cool because yes. th there's just this this island here. And there's nothing, as far as you can see, connecting this island to anything. So what mm -hmm. we're walking up to right now is actually the backstage. But the way for these animals to get to this backstage is incredibly well hidden. We'll... It's, it's like a tunnel or something under the water. Exactly. It's a tunnel, yeah. which is super, super cool. I It took me actually a few visits to, to realize this. <laughs> well, and when I, I did, I was like, holy crap, there's a tunnel over there. Um, Wait, you can see the tunnel? You can or you can see loosely, something at the tunnel. You can loosely, loosely determine where it is. Um, <gasps> but yeah, over here is the uh, the indoor area for the macaque. And this is usually not accessible, but uh, when I was filming this day, it was. So Oh yeah, I, I was about was. to say, I've never seen this before. <laughs> yeah, we could also see a little outside holding area um, in the bushes there. Um, but yeah, usually that chain on the right there is closed, but it was uh -huh. open. I don't know if it's... If it, I don't know if it was supposed to be open, but it has it was, glass so. at the viewing gallery. So maybe it mm -hmm. was just temporarily closed when they were like maybe yeah. like upgrading the indoor habitat but or something. Anyway, over here in those rocks in front of that log, you can see uh, yeah, there's some there's a bunch of rocks and there's a hole going down there. So that is um, what connects oh. to, to the tunnel. And then that over so here, interesting. you can see where the tunnel comes out again into, into the backstage. <laughs> Oh, I'm going to pay so much attention to this the next time I will visit <laughs> yeah. this habitat. It's but in cool. general, like these island habitats are just so cool. I really wish we were able to make that a lot easier in Planet Zoo. Yeah. It's, uh, it's so frustrating. Like you always have to make some kind of connection. Yeah, yeah. I'm, I have done the tunnel thing uh, as a proof of concept in my Key Park Zoo. Oh, how um, did it work out? It's It works. For I've done it with the capuchin. Uh, and it works, but I haven't detailed it yet, so I don't know how oh. it's going to work out. Yeah, okay. <laughs> but, Depending on the traversal areas, huh? Yes. So on the left over here, we have a view of the uh, Burung Asia, the giant aviary, which also is close, which makes me really upset. So I, frustrating. I haven't visited this since I was a little kid, so I, I don't have any footage or anything of it, which... Yeah, it just really, really sucks. I want yeah. to go inside here so bad because it's so beautiful. It really and is. Especially since it might actually be going soon. Well, maybe not soon, but... They're going to remove it? Um, in the master plan of the zoo, uh, the elephant yard is going to be greatly expanded. 
Oh, and it's right. going to be in this direction. So it's going to go, basically, there's going to be a passage over the guest path mm -hmm. through where the aviary is now. And then, uh, yeah, there's going to be an, uh, a yard where the camels are now. So. Oh, oh, that will be such a pity, but the, the chances are high that you won't be able to go in there for no. a long time. Have you no. actually heard that the bird flu is, is now being catched by normal house cats? Oh, really? Cuts That's... of meat. Yeah, it happened oh. in Poland, I think 13 cats or something, or 16 mm. cats. So it's yeah, just imagine that, that all the cats <laughs> or other animals from, from every zoo are also catching the bird flu. I mean, oh man, that would be just just devastating. Yeah. Well, yeah. it's it devastating in general. Like you don't want your cat to get the bird flu as well. <laughs> yeah, but also just the birds in general it is already devastating, and it has been definitely just endless uh, recently. So, yeah, I've it's only rock seen rock formations. By the way, I just yes. so much want to have these type of rough rocks in Planet Zoo. Yeah, it's really something I'm missing. Yeah, I love how just all the foliage grows in between it. It's, it's you can so tell that this area has settled in like ever since it was built. Yeah, I don't even know how old this is exactly, but it is Ooh. looking beautiful. Well, wow, it is very old. <laughs> <laughs> Most of the zoo is, which is what yeah. I like about it. Well, what year is 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 Blight Orb made or opened? I actually have um, no idea. Was it beginning 1900s or something? Um, it yes, but this it started off somewhere else. This is kind of the new location, and I think it's somewhere around the Second World War. I, I have this written down somewhere for a few episodes ago. <laughs> <laughs> I need to watch that episode then, no worries. <laughs> um, oh yeah, uh, 1939 is when the Riviera Hall was built. So, the, the, oh yeah, the zoo moved to this location in 1938. 1938, wow. Yes, so almost 100 years actually. Yeah, amazing. Oh. So there we can see the red ground brain once again. Yay, oh, you were so lucky. <laughs> I tend to be. I, I have pretty good zoo luck in general. I've seen some really good footage so far, yes, definitely. Not only in this video, but on your channel in general. Really yeah. nice footage. Yeah. So that is the end of the uh, Asian swamp already. So we are uh, moving on to a little in-between area. There's a bunch of different animals, uh, still from Asia, of course. Uh, starting with an animal that we saw the backstage of in the last episode. And now we are seeing the outdoor habitat of the lion-tailed macaque over here. Oh man, again these rocks. <laughs> <laughs> I just can't get over rock formations. They're just always like so good. And it, like, ugh, I'm so often missing these type of rocks. Oh, also like the big rounded African mm, rocks yeah, as the well. Yeah, yes. Yeah, yeah. I, I really hope we will still see them in the game. But these climbing frames are also super inspiring. They're super nice, yeah, very natural. We could yeah. also see the, uh, the science spotted deer uh, in the background of this habitat. Yeah, oh, I don't think I've seen it. It went too <laughs> fast. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but yeah, we can also get a different viewing area over here, and it was very crowded because there was... It, uh, there was a lot of people here. indeed. But you also have a really nice weather here, so you're also very mm -hmm. lucky with the weather, aren't you? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I definitely picked the zoo. Uh, I, I went back to record one more time because all of my other footage was in the winter. So I just wanted oh, to make sure. Oh, that's so smart. I just wanted to make sure I got some nice spring footage over here. I also okay. really would love these beams, by the way. These mm -hmm. are so nice and natural bend or naturally bended. Mm -hmm. But it's it's almost impossible to do that in planets. You yeah. only yeah, a we lot have of some pieces around. for it, but the more of those pieces you use, the less uh, well the climbing works. Yeah. So, oh, yeah. Exactly it's that. Oh, it's terrible. So, yeah, what do we have here? A little aviary. I don't know which bird this is because I didn't see the sign for it. <laughs> um, mm. I know that the other part of this aviary has plum-headed parakeets and Java sparrows. Oh. Um, but yeah, I don't know what that one that we just saw was. Over here we have a little separation area for the uh, black buck, or the Indian antelope. Mm -hmm. um, they have a shared habitat with the bantang, which we'll look at in a second. But this is a little yeah separate area for them to get away from the big uh, the big cows. <laughs> it's funny how how beautiful the habitat looks, even though if you just look closely and like 
the inside or the middle section of the house it's like purely uh, sand yeah, or, dirt. or dirt <laughs> and there's actually like there's fences around it like very clearly but because of the nice hedges and things you it kind of blends away and you just yeah. see the greenery so it makes it look a lot more natural than it actually is but yeah exactly i think that that's just super inspiring in general like this habitat has a bit more landscape and going on with the trees and then these yeah pieces of foliage uh, section off of hot layer to keep it green but um, still yeah. it's pretty simple like if i would make a video like this on my channel like not many <laughs> people would watch it it's like yeah the <laughs> super boring and plain it's a lot of dirt <laughs> but it looks so gorgeous and it helps a lot that the terrain slopes up ever so slightly as it gets to the back. Mm -hmm. um, oh yeah, this is also really nice. You can see how the path is painted in such a way to direct you from one viewing area to the other. Yeah, um, I actually never noticed that. I don't know if it was added during COVID or not. I feel like it was to kind of help people find the, the one-way walking routes back when COVID. Uh, I think I'm in the good. wrong episode here because I'm seeing a camel. <laughs> Yeah, we have a surprise guest. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> and here's Rudy. Oh no, <laughs> Rudy's cousin. Technically. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, we can see once again the aviary in the back looking really, really cool. Is yeah, there? Just... Wait, what? An aviary in the back? Did I miss out on that? Yeah, I guess so. <laughs> the, the giant aviary is kind of looming over this. Habitat. Oh yes, of course, <laughs> yes. Oh man, also something that is super hard to create. Mm, mm. So much blind zoo inspiration, but so <laughs> many things we can't do. So frustrating. You can do it if you're patient. <laughs> yeah, exactly that. Like you really need a lot of patience to create these things. Yeah, sometime in the future, this uh, this camel habitat will be an elephant yard. So I really wonder what's uh, what this zoo is going to look like in they ten did, years. They did delay the the building of it, right? Mm -hmm. I, I, when the last time I was here, they were uh, collecting money for it. So I'm not sure what the, the timeline of it is exactly. Yeah, but. it can still take a few years. Mm -hmm. Who knows, oh, maybe you are able to go into those aviaries still then. <laughs> maybe <laughs> if you're lucky. But yeah, this is the uh, the yard for the Bantang and the Black Buck. I really love how open wow. it is, how open the viewing area is with the water in front and then, yeah, just a very Definitely, clear view. it looks very beautiful. No, and you have such beautiful. nice shots of these animals <laughs> as well. Yeah, here we have the male. It's just absolutely, definitely one of the animals I really hope that we're still going to get in the game officially at some point. Because I'm not going to agree with that. <laughs> Sorry. You're done, you're done with all the, the deer. Yes. And the... <laughs> yes, I'm a little bit done with all those animals. Just carry my aquarium. But are we going to see? No, we're not going to see the aquarium. Can I join you again no. for the aquarium? <laughs> I've already done the aquarium. Then That's I can constantly say, I want aquariums. Yes, there, there will be one more bonus episode after after I'm done with the entire series, which will be the backstage of the aquarium. The so backstage? Have you been there? Twice, yes. What? You can actually you can actually rent uh, a, a guided tour of the backstage <gasps> on the website of Lido. I read something about that. Highly That's recommend so cool. it. It's super cool. Yeah. Oh, I really want to do that. I have done that as well in Burgers. Burger Zoo, mm -hmm. we got like this backstage tour, and that was really awesome at the at the aquariums. Yeah, but obviously, I would love to see it from Blighter. But yeah, I know what you want to say. Yes, go ahead. You say it. You say it. <laughs> we are <laughs> at the next area of the zoo, and this is a, br a brand new area. It's about one year old at this point, and this is for the lady's favorite animal to pronounce. <laughs> <laughs> I was wondering why he he really wanted me to have in this episode and then he messaged you yeah, i'm like it's the red panda and i was like no <laughs> <laughs> i still have such a hard time with saying that name you, it, you think you said it correctly right yeah but i'm i'm really trying because each and every episode when i have a, a red pen <laughs> people always complain to me no matter what episode was hey i thought you said the red penna and i was like eh. <laughs> it is always that one word that you you struggle yes. with. For me, it was three or tree or free. I oh, that's it's always one hard. or the other. <laughs> but it's just being Dutch, and then like the 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 D and the T. We we it all sounds the same in the Netherlands, and yeah. even we have a DT combination, <laughs> which also sounds like a T. And ugh, it's just frustrating. So red, red <laughs> I really red. have a hard time with that word. 
Yeah, but they do have a very beautiful area over here. Of course, it has to be mentioned that the uh, Blydorp is the species coordinator of the Red Panda breeding program here uh, in Europe, and I think even worldwide. So they get to decide uh, which Red Pandas go to which zoos to yeah, breed and get like healthy offspring. Mm -hmm. um, and yeah, last year they finally opened up this area, which was uh, a renovated monument, uh, which is the giant rock that you saw in the habitat. Um, but they built this beautiful, like, kind of Nepalese-themed area around it. Uh, we've got tons of education over here about the breeding yeah. program and the things that Blighter does for the red pandas in the wild, together with the Red Panda Network, which is the uh, like non-profit organization that yeah, actually helps them out in the wild. Um, and yeah, we have this beautiful habitat that we're about to get to. Yeah, I I must admit, like the habitat is is amazing with the with that big rock in the middle mm -hmm. and and the trees in front of it. Like definitely one of my favorites. I think this is such a cool, yeah, cool. Yeah. It's the exhibit it's, design. It's the most unique red panda habitat I've ever seen, and it's absolutely gorgeous. The only thing that I don't really like about it. Um, and there we have one. <laughs> um, <laughs> the only thing I don't really like about it is the uh, the, the barrier in front of it. This yeah. little kind of yeah, it's very classic, Blydorp. Uh, yeah. I understand why <laughs> it's there. It's that. it's part of the monument. So hey, did they move those guys as well in the yes, habitat? they are also in here. It's a shared oh. habitat. Uh, of course, Blydorp is also the species coordinator of the Tuft of Deer. We touched on that in the last episode. <laughs> Yes. Um, and this is one of, yeah, they can be mixed with the red pandas, so they are both in this yard as well as the other one. Um, yeah, they, they have, like, I think even three red panda habitats? Um, at the moment, it's two. Is so it two? You have, you have or is that one. maybe just one really big one, then? Because it felt yeah. like it were two, but... Yeah, yeah, yeah. We'll, we'll get to that one, then. But anyway, the, the fence here in the front, that's part of the, uh, the monument, and if they weren't... Um, if they hadn't restored like, everything about the monument, which includes the fence, um, they basically would have missed out on a huge like, um, yeah, budget compensation from the mm -hmm. municipality and kind of the monument organizations. So that's why they kind of yeah, were forced in a way to uh, restore all of that stuff. Yeah, but it, it's okay. It, it it's, it's like unique to to Blight Orb. It it really has such a unique architectural style that mm -hmm. oh man, I'm just such a huge fan of it in a way. But yes. then again, it's like super ugly as well. <laughs> Sometimes in some areas you're really like ah oh, yeah, but but it's Blight Orb. It makes you it, recognize it. Makes Blight Orb, Blight Orb. Yes. Yeah, but but the mountain like and and the that tree trunk that you saw in the middle, like the mm -hmm. broken tree trunk and stuff. Yeah. Oh man. Which is really interesting as well. It's it's uh, that tree trunk is actually like faux, so it's it's fake. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah. And it actually has. I, I said the whole mountain is fake, but. <laughs> <laughs> really? What? Yes. I, thought they, I thought they picked a real mountain out of Nepal. <laughs> and no, but um, those those uh, tree trunks and things like that actually have holes inside of them as well, which have uh, nesting boxes, which is really really cool. Oh yeah, that's really nice. And this is also a cool bit of education about camera traps which are used to monitor the red pandas in the wild um, and we have the ranger hut over there a really beautiful hut i also love the fog machine over here. yes yes you almost <laughs> forget this is i think the first zoo i've ever seen with like a v of x i mean we have v of x's in planet zoo but... we, uh, i forgot to mention it but actually when you enter the swamp area that we started this episode with there is actually also a fog machine there. yeah 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 but i mean like yeah apart from fog I, mm -hmm. Well, I don't know. Yeah, well, okay, waterfalls are also famous. <laughs> 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 Never mind, I didn't say anything. <laughs> Every zoo is full of waterfalls, mostly. Yeah. But it's a really nice, nice habitat from all angles. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. It's only sometimes super hard to see the rat pandas if they are in the tr trees. Yeah. And you're like, yeah. If ah. you're lucky, <laughs> and when they get new offspring again, they'll they'll be playing around like they did. Yeah, exactly. Also, yeah, I showed some of the footage I have of the red pandas throughout this video, but I have way, way more at about <laughs> 12 minutes of, of playing oh, wow. and running and climbing red pandas. So if you go to my second channel, Goron Stuff. Um, Wait, you have a I... second channel where you upload that as well? Yes, I upload like <gasps> animal clips and stuff. I started wow. doing it recently. Uh, so alongside this video, I will upload a 12 minute long red panda video yes. of the red pandas at Blyder here. So. Oh yes, I want to see that. 
So this little hut over here is showing you all sorts of um, yeah things that the Red Panda Network does. And we just saw a, a cooking stove. But yeah, this is a really cool well, thing. But you learning <laughs> this is a really cool thing. But uh, my camera can't record <laughs> beamers very well. So um, small epilepsy warning here. <laughs> <laughs> um, there is a, a storybook over here with a projector projecting a story about red pandas. Um, I've, I've totally missed out on this. <laughs> That's really cool. It's so cool. And it tells you about, yeah, about breeding programs, about things in the wild, uh, about the, the problems that they face, like um, wood being cut, which we can see over here. Um, yeah, it's really, really cool. And it's such an awesome way to, to show this stuff. Yeah, um, my and jaw it's super interesting for kids as well. Yeah, like kids will be so appealed by the the cartoonish animations yeah. and stuff. So what's really cool over here is inside of the habitat you have to, kind of a bit of flowing water. It actually flows out over here, um, which is really really awesome. And when it's on, during this recording it wasn't on. And yeah, that house is just full of stuff uh, about the Red Panda Network. And as someone who has been um, actively supporting and donating to the Red Panda Network for years already, it was so freaking cool to see all of that stuff. Oh, I can't um, imagine. Kind of out there, because yeah, if you don't know already, if you're new to the channel, Red Pandas are by far my favorite animal. Aww. <laughs> <laughs> well, Red Pandas are just so freaking adorable. They have mm -hmm. such, such a cute face, and I don't know, they... they who doesn't love red pandas? Yeah. Red mm -hmm. pandas. <laughs> <laughs> the more you say it, the more you start to doubt yourself. Right? Yes, yes. <laughs> it's not that I don't sound like a rat. Oh, yes. It does. Uh, yeah. Okay, it, never mind. It, did I say it the wrong way? <laughs> oh, I don't know. <laughs> so, uh, as, oh yeah, over here you can see really cool in that fake trunk, uh, you can see some doors of the nesting box. Oh! It's like a blinking you'll miss it moment. Yeah, it was a blink and it was gone again. <laughs> um, and yeah, over here we have the rhino habitat, the Indian rhino, I should specify, because Lightup actually has two species of rhino. Yeah. Um, but yeah, this also got expanded with the, um, the expansion of the red panda area. And yeah, we can see it lying right over here. Aww. Look at him or her. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know either. <laughs> I know Just that the they sun. have slash had. I really hope it's not had. Um, they all, they've always had two of them. Um, and yeah, one of them had some health problems recently. Mm -hmm. And I I hope that they've been resolved. <laughs> and not, oh, yeah. Because um, yeah, for a while you couldn't get to the indoor area of the rhinos because they were trying to keep it like nice and quiet for them. Isn't um, the indoor area at the uh, elephants? Yes, yes, at the elephants. Oh, yeah, okay. Now that yeah. I know which one you mean. <laughs> this is the uh, the second uh, red panda habitat. And I think this is where you meant, like, you know, isn't this two habitats? Yeah, it's the left and the right side. But I just saw, yeah. like, a beam going underneath the exactly. bridge. Exactly, yes. Yeah. There was a beam going under the bridge. So, Whereas in the old habitat, before this was renovated, there were beams going over the path. Um, at the moment, uh, the beams go under the path, so... Yeah, the red pandas yeah. can go to either side. But. It's really nice. I, I don't know, for some reason, because you have seen like the, the beautiful mountain and stuff, mm -hmm. then you would almost forget like there is another habitat. I see so many people just passing by this area also yeah. being like, oh yeah, there's nothing here probably. But then you're like, oh wait, there is all tons of red pandas here as well. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I mean, of course, as the species coordinator, they, it's nice for them to have an, a nice big area for them to house as many of these as necessary like if there's a zoo that their habitat isn't ready yet or they need to <laughs> separate the young from their parents they can actually do it within their own zoo and they don't need to immediately yeah transport That's them great. To oh it's so cute how it's rubbing its head <laughs> that was so adorable <laughs> yep that's the uh, the tufted deer again and yeah this is the end of the red panda area Aww. with the awesome little gate with the bell the bell is actually gone for a small time um, I don't know why I here we can see it crossing under the, under the path. <laughs> the yeah. yeah, it's a really nice area. I really like it that it's like these these two little islands and, and connected now with like yeah. the beam underneath the bridge and it's really nice made. It's super lush. Yes, that's what I was gonna say it's as super well. Natural. This really shows like the red pandas live in, in forests and up in trees and 
the other habitat, of course, the trees still need to grow and uh, yeah, grow more to, to give them that lushness and, and the trees to really retreat into. Um, but here you do definitely see that already. Yeah. yeah. Then we have another view of the camels over here. Rudy! <laughs> and what I love about camels, and I will say this in any camel enclosure I see, I love how <laughs> little of a barrier they need. Um, oh, this, yeah. This actually is like a lot already. Like there's actually like a pretty, yeah, it, it, the terrain goes down a bit. There's a bit of a haha -ha mode, as you call it. Um, what? <laughs> what? <laughs> there's a, a zoo design term. It's like when the pa when it goes, there is a mode, but it's kind of hidden from the people. <laughs> yeah. And it, it looks like the animals can get to you, but haha, they can't. That's, <laughs> that's basically why it's called. <laughs> is that an official word? <laughs> do, yeah. do zoos actually use that, or is that yeah, something it's... that all these uh, planet zoo creators? I don't just, know. I think it's actual know. a zoo design term. Oh, really? Yeah. Oh, that's so hilarious. Yeah, this is kind of the old uh, viewing area of the rhinos. This is also what used to go into the red panda habitat. And this used to extend into that. Um, but I actually have not seen that part at the uh, red panda. <laughs> I totally <laughs> saw that. So I always go to the to the, the old Indian rhino habitat yeah. area. Oh, wait, are, these are not all the rhinos. These are, are all the rhinos in the world, basically. Oh, yeah, in the world. Yeah. I was like, wait, that's not in Blighter, right? No, no, no. No, <laughs> no, yeah. no. no. If only, if only. No, I think for like, uh, I don't know if it's the Javan or the Sumatran rhino. There's only like less than 50 left in the world. So you wouldn't find those in the zoo very easily. No, that's true. Here in the backside, you see those same big chunks yeah. of rocks again. My Very goodness. Nice. Give me those rocks. <laughs> Are there any mothers already creating those rocks? Or did they already create that? <laughs> I, I think there is, there is there is definitely mothers that have made more rocks and other like prop mods. But yeah, it's prop mods. They're a little bit more risky to uh, work with. Yeah, that's right. Ah. <clears throat> so frustrating, <laughs> but I really like it how they they added like these these patches in the middle of the habitat to still create like a little bit of this this dense dense feeling inside of the okay. habitat. Yeah. Oh, what's this again? This is like that yes. grumpy cat. Thing. This is the. Uh, <laughs> I don't know why I call it the grumpy palace cat. cat the palace cat. <laughs> and uh, this is where my zoo luck shines uh, because. Well, you saw I mean, it? I, I have seen it. Yes, here it is. <laughs> Look, what? it's a little bit of a grumpy cat. It is a little bit of a grumpy cat. <laughs> um, yeah, from from the like 10 plus times that I've been here, I've only seen them once. And I'm really happy that I did. Um, because, yeah, they are always hidden somewhere. I don't know. This habitat goes up and I think back there it has probably a little area to hide in. Um, but yeah. I do think this is a really beautiful habitat because of that like upward slope and it's just really, really so awesome. true. Yeah. And I li like it how, yeah, well, should not say how small it is. You should not like <laughs> a small habitat, but like the compact size of it it's, and, it's and the lush cozy. vibe and <laughs> yeah, it just looks super nice and realistically would not be able to do that in Planet 2 <laughs> unless you're playing in sandbox mode. Yeah. But yeah, I think they also have like a cave or, or tunnel system or something underneath it. I'm mm, shooting something like be, that. Maybe that actually might be why it slopes up. Maybe it's backstage just like underneath. That would be really cool. Yeah, but, yeah. But yeah, this is uh, one more view of the camels and that is pretty and the much... Ha -ha mode. <laughs> and the haha -ha mode. <laughs> and that is pretty much where we're going to end off this episode. The oh, next no! episode, we're going to be joined by two people and we're going <gasps> to look at the entire oh, elephant oh. area. Um, oh, it's, it's Zoof and Lieder. <laughs> oh, that's so yeah. much fun. Okay, yeah. so definitely everyone should definitely also watch that episode. All the and episodes. I'm if you're somehow not subscribed to the lady, uh, which <laughs> I highly <laughs> doubt you are, oh, um, maybe you are. Make sure Hi. to uh, make sure to check out her channel. <laughs> she Aww. makes cool, cool zoo stuff as well, and she showcases a lot of other people's zoos on her channel as well, which is really awesome. Oh, so um, much inspiration. But yeah, <laughs> this is what we'll be looking at in the next episode. So I'll see you then. Thank you so much for having me. Thank you so much for being here once again. Thank you. <laughs> and uh, yeah, let's end with the, the house cat, <laughs> the uh, cat. Taking, a, taking a dump. Bye-bye. <laughs> <laughs>